Hey guys, I got a grid and a point cloud here and I'm going to set up this effect from scratch. So um, what we're going to do is disconnect all of these polygons and then connect them to a particle system and then animate the polygons with the particle system. But there's a kind of a gotcha I need to show you guys. Connecting these two items here, the grid and the point cloud or a mesh and the point cloud, you, ca you have to avoid this issue with the cyclical reference. If we tell the point cloud to emit particles from, from the grid's po polygon position, and then we tell the grid, well, now I want you to follow whatever the particle system does. That's a cyclical reference. The grid is asking the point cloud questions, the point cloud is asking the grid questions, and you can't have a cyclical reference. And I'll just set that up the wrong way right quick so you can see. So I have the grid highlighted here. I'll create an ice tree, and I'll just bring, uh, no, I'll do it the other way first. On the point cloud, I create an ice tree. I'll just drop in the grid, and this is just a. And the, this is this represents us getting the point positions and emitting them. So now, if I if I want to do the other way and say, well, uh, grid, now you need to follow the point cloud. I just simply just bring in the point cloud here. Uh, Soft Mars is going to complain and says, hey, you have a cycle, you have a cycle breaking point. You can't have this cyclical reference. Cyclical reference. You can't say you can't have the point cloud asking the grid for information, and then having the grid asking the point cloud for information. It doesn't know who, which one is first. And what we need to happen first is we need the point cloud to emit from the grid first, and then from there on out, we need the grid to ask the point cloud for its particle positions. So one way around that is to clone the mesh object and ask for the point cloud information there. And this works, but you end up with an n plus n times two scenario, which is for however many objects, which represents n in your scene, you, you end up with twice that much because you have to clone each one if you want to do a particle simulation. So I don't like, I didn't like that solution. So what we can take advantage of is the modeling region, simulation region separation and ice uh, calculations. So what I can do is come here and create a simulated ice tree on the grid. And what that does is break any reference to the modeling region. So I can safely bring in my point cloud here on the grid and it doesn't complain about a cycle. It doesn't complain about a cycle because it has no clue that the point cloud is accessing the grid in the Mali region is because that's just how they designed it, which I think is genius, by the way. Um, the simulation region isn't aware of any ice tree activity in the modeling region. It just asks, so, asks soft image for the scene data and goes from there. So that's how we get around having to clone, clone our objects that we're going to animate. We just put the uh, we, do, we put the glue components in the uh, simulation region, which is really where they should be. Um, so anyway, to really get this to work though, we need to disconnect the polygons so that we can animate them. So I'll bring in my grid, do a set, wire this up. Actually value, uh, okay, you're gonna complain. Oh no, I didn't want to do that anyway. So I've done index. And we want to disconnect polygons. And we want to set the topology back. Topology. Okay. So all that's disconnected. And then we need to initialize some data here for animation. This is just doing, this init, init mesh data is just doing two things. It's storing the init, initial point position. It's storing the list of vertex of polygon indexes. And then in the simulation region of the grid, we just glue it to the point cloud with the second compound. And set that data back. This is rare because we haven't initialized the point cloud, the P-O-I-N-T position. 
we haven't initialized the particle use particles yet. So let's go over here. We really don't need that. I'm gonna put this in the simulation region. Um, so I'm gonna do an emit from position. Drop that in there. Pull in the grid. We'll do a point position. Total number of particles, no speed. Go to the second frame. Uh, oh, I need polygon position. Polygon position. Boom. So now we got one particle per polygon. If we go back to the grid here, you can see it's all green. That's because the everything's been initialized. The particles are live, so it's not red anymore. It's cool. And that's it. Whatever we do to these uh, particles will affect the uh, will affect the polygons. So let's just wire something up right quick. We'll do a particle position. Get both of those. We'll get a random value. Data so I can get sub ID. We'll use that as our ID. And actually, I don't need get particle positions, do I? I'm not going to do it. Mm, yes, I will. So we'll set it. The variance will be. B2, B1, and we'll execute that. And so, as you can see, the mesh is moved, and then each frame is just probably going to do something weirder. So, that's how it works. Um, and I'll be sharing these compounds, and then uh, I'll put up like maybe three or four example scenes, and then the community should be able to take it from there. But uh, you can do whatever you can, whatever particle effect you can create, it'll uh, it'll work. Uh, we can do we can melt meshes, we could put meshes into a blender. You can blow up towns. Uh, you attack one, attach one particle per building in a town, or attach one particle per polygon in a in a town that you build, and then you know put a force in the middle of that town. You can blow the blow all the buildings away. That kind of stuff. So uh, that is the breakdown of the scene, and then I'll uh, upload some examples, and you guys should be good to go from there.